Hi guys, Steve here. On this video, I'm going to share the most fantastically epic way to catch and tame a Mostar. But before I do, please make sure you're subscribed, click the bell notifications on all so you don't miss out on any more videos, and like and share with your friends. The first thing you need to do is tame a giant turtle, because that'd be carrying your cage. I'll link a video on the best way how to do that at the end. I'll quickly show you around the turtle to show you how I fortified it. I reached the maximum structures I could place on it, then I'm going to go over how I built a trap on top. It's a mobile trap so you can take it anywhere in the ocean. Alright, let's board it. I've left the hatchway to where the main seat is, so I can get in and out when I dismount. I started by placing one foundation in the front centre, then two foundations off to the right, and two foundations off to the left, so it's five wide. Then I built foundations as far back as I could. That ended up being six deep. You get a bit of collision lag stutter when you walk over it, which is a bit annoying. When I place ceiling tiles along the side to do the side skirts, that's just one tile, then built down with walls to protect the sides. I've left the front open because I want to aggro the motor and get it to attack me from the front. And if anything else attacks me there, I'll be able to bite it. I use all the remaining tiles to mainly protect the sides. And because you can't build on the back of a shell, they'll be left open anyway, but it's only a small area. And if you move left and right, creatures will find it hard to bite. Then I placed a row of ceilings at the front and a hatch so I can get in and out. To place the dino gates perfectly, but this way does waste two object tiles, I placed the fence foundation down so the dino gate will snap to it and perfectly align up to the sides. Then place the first one, second, third, fourth, all the way to the back, then finally the fifth back gate. And on the other side, put a fence foundation again and repeated it. The most I can't escape through those gaps. And the final two gates at the front to lock everything in. To stop anything attacking me while I'm riding, I put one wall up at the back and a ceiling on top to protect my head. I'll get on it and show you one final look around, so you'll be able to build it. The only place really open is its front, back and underneath. Now I bet you're thinking how you're going to get a moser in there, and how you're going to keep it in there without it swimming out the top. I'll get to that soon. Next I'd advise you to take a fast attack sea creature. I'm bringing a basilo, and you need it to go out first and find the moser you want to tame. I've already gone out and found a high level one. It's other purposes, because the turtle is not that great at defending itself, you'll need a good creature to defend it. Otherwise you're going to be messing around trying to kill things with a turtle, and that'll greatly slow everything down. So a basilo is going to be my most scout and turtle defense. You can cryopod it up and then throw it out when you need it, or have it on follow, it's up to you. Right, those are the main things you need to prepare. I'm going to get on my turtle. Go down to the depth and try and find me a Mosa. Right, let's go on to the technique of how we're going to tame a Mosa. If you press the right mouse button while you're on a turtle, it will do bubble breath, indicated by the bar in the bottom middle of your screen. The turtle will blow bubbles out of its mouth, and if enough bubbles hit the sea creature you're aiming at, a large round air bubble will be created around it, and it will start floating to the surface. Now the Mosasaur is a deep sea creature, and you'll only find them swimming around near the bottom of the ocean. There is only a certain depth level of the sea it will swim up to, and that is its weakness. If a Mosa finds itself above that depth level, it'll automatically swim down to the level you'll normally find them. So have you worked out where this is going yet? The first stage is to get a Mosa in front of a turtle so you can breathe bubbles onto it. Sometimes you can do it right away, others you can take several minutes if it's been awkward. It's coming around to the front, start breathing. You need to have bubbles on it for a few seconds for it to create the air bubble. Swam past this time. Turn around. Because that front's open, it'll come back at you to try to attack. There we go, we've got a bubble around it. Now it'll float up away from its comfort level. What you want to do now is position the cage directly under its head. Now it's better to do this if you've got open ocean above you, but I'm going to show you what to do if it floats up and it's blocked by rocks. Now because the Mosa is higher than it normally should be, it will automatically want to swim down as soon as the bubble breaks. So the second stage is to keep your cage underneath its head, and as it starts to descend, you want to try and catch it in your cage. There we go, just like that. Let me go around the top to show you. Now, even though we've got it trapped, just make sure there's nothing else to attack us. 
the Mosa's main and only priority is to go down to the level it normally swims at. But it can't do that because you've put your turtle cage underneath it. So from here, you could trank it if you wanted. Come on, admit it. You're impressed by that. Don't forget to subscribe to get more good ideas. I'll wait here a little bit longer to show you that all it wants to do is just swim down. It's not bothered about attacking me. The turtle just wants to swim down. But I don't want this one as I've seen a higher level motor around. So I'm going to dive as fast as I can with the turtle. Move to the side and try and get it to swim out the cage. There we go, it's free. Now I'm going to do the same with the Mosa I do want to tame. That one was level 100, but this one's level 145. Let's get it in front, blow bubbles. As I've got it. Yep, swimming up. Well, floating up. You can do this with any sea creature. Plesio in the background, or any shark. Again, keep your cage under its head. The Mosa will turn and float down slightly at an angle. I'm just going to ignore that, please, yeah. We'll pull, try and avoid that. I'm trying to keep the cage aligned with its body. So the long end will get the full length of its body. But mainly keeping with its head. Because if it swims down or moves, moves slightly diagonal. It's coming down, keep level with it. A bit left a bit, left a bit, left a bit. As long as you get its head. I think I've got it. Yep, now try and turn and align up with its body, get all of it in, and there we go. It's as easy as that. <laughs> Pretty darn good, eh? Level 145, Mosa, nice blue colour as well. And from here, you can trank it if you want. However, keep watching, because there's a better way of doing it. Now we're tranking it, the most will try and wiggle around and try and swim down. And in turn that will push the turtle cage lower and lower, to the point where the most will get enough clearance and manage to escape. And if you've been tranking him for the last 10 minutes, that's quite annoying. You'd have to swim after the Mosa, which is a lot faster than you on a turtle, get in front of it, bubble breath it, let it go to the surface and catch it in the cage again. And by the time you've done that, you could have lost a lot of its torpor. So if you're doing this solo, you need to trank the Mosa, then every now and then get on your turtle and raise the cage slightly so the Mosa doesn't escape. This is much easier with two people, because one can keep tranking, while the other person can trank now and then, but with the main job of lifting a turtle cage up to keep the Mosa trapped. And if you get it trapped in a cave or an outcrop of rock above you, then the second person can pin it to the ceiling with the cage. I managed to catch up with a Mosa again, but just to show you, this is the most amount of Mosas I've ever seen in one spot. So I'm showing you as it's a good demonstration of how your turtle trap armour works. I'm still getting bitten now and then, but it's nothing compared to what I would be without it. Look at them all, that's incredible, I've never seen so many Mosas in my life in one spot. I think multiple groups have merged together on this area. We're all trying to have a little nibble of me. Right, don't hang around there too long. If you get attacked by that many, just swim up high enough and you'll lose aggro. Anyway, back to the taming. I managed to find the Mosa again and bubble it, but there's loads of electric eels underneath my shell. So throw out your Baslo. Go underneath and start nibbling on them. Once you've thrown out your bass low, it's probably best to keep it on follow. You don't want to cryo it up again and then get attacked and have to wait minutes for cryo sickness before you can throw it out again. So eat everything around that's any danger. Then go back to your Mosa. I've got it bubbled and it's floating to the surface. Now it's popped. And just to show you, it takes a little bit of getting used to. 
It's there, I miss it. It swims down faster than I can dive. I tried to air bubble it on the way down. That didn't work, so I'm going to have to go down, get it again. So you won't be able to do it first time every time, and it takes a bit of practice. And now we come to the final taming method I came up with. To turn the turtle faster, push the back button, S, on the keyboard, then the left and right key. That turns it faster on the spot. I managed the bubble vermosa as it was attacking me. That's floating up to the surface. Got a basilo on follow. Try and keep the middle of my cage underneath its head. The mosa will keep turning around and changing its direction. Try and follow it. Try and get the cage long ways with its body. Give you more of a chance of catching its head. Keeps going up. Now the best way to do this is with open ocean above. And I'll show you why when we get there. Keep lined up with it as best you can. I'm raising as fast as my turtle will go. Might be best to put movement speed in. Right, the bubble's popped and it's making its way down. Turning, trying to get its head in. It was a close one, but I managed to get its neck and most of its body. Right, now what I'm going to do is slowly raise until its tummy is on the bottom of the platform and keep pushing it up. You don't want to raise too high or the most will escape through the turtle. Right, I've got it trapped, so I'm going to get on a basilo and kill any predators around me. The most will just try and keep swimming down. We're not attacking it yet, so it's not panicking. The turtle needs to be on passive, by the way, so it doesn't move. Right, I'll just kill the shark. Probably the other one as well. Right, all the sharks around me are dead. Let's get back on the turtle. The most is still trying to swim down, but it can't because I'm blocking it. Now push it up slowly. As you can see, it's lowered the cage and itself. Now we're blocking it on the sides with dino doors, but we haven't got a roof. So what we're going to do is go to the surface, and then unless the Mosa can develop wings and fly away, then it's trapped, as it won't be able to swim over the top because it's air. And from here, all you have to do is trank it. I've built this trap out of stone as it's the cheapest material. However, the donkeys can damage it. So if you want something that lasts forever, you can make it out of metal. Keep an eye on the height of the dino gate doors. And if they start going below the surface, get back onto your turtle. Raise it up again. Get them above the water level. Then carry on narcoing it again. Gradually the trap will lower again. And you keep an eye on top of the uh, dino gate doors again. Once those go below the water surface, it gives you an indicator of that you need to get on your turtle and raise them above the surface again. That way the most is never going to be able to escape. Make sure there's no predators, make sure my basilo is okay. Whoop, that looks like he's getting a bit frisky. Right, get on the turtle, slowly ease it up. Not too much. Don't move to the side or don't try and twist until it's in the cage. It nearly slid out that time. From a previous go, don't get too fussy but it's not perfectly within the cage. It's trapped there, not going anywhere. 
but if you get on your turtle and lower it too much to lower the Mosa, then as you can see it slides off. So don't do that and don't lower it too fast so it's out of the cage. Anyway, back to the proper go. Still tranking it. Cage is slowly lowering down. Get back on the turtle, raise it up again. Like I say, it's a lot easier if you've got two people. One person can continuously shoot it, while the other one checks its cage. You're not going anywhere. Cover bass low towards me in case I get attacked by anything. Now the Mosa is in the middle of a cage and when it moves it looks like it's coming out of it but don't believe that. If you did try and move a cage there to try and compensate then you would glitch it out of the cage. So remember if it's at the surface it won't be able to get over and if you know it's in the centre even if it looks like it's coming out it won't be. So just keep the cage where it is. Don't try and rotate it or move it to the side. To check its torpidity, you can look at a Mosa and press H. That'll send your robot to examine it and show you how much torpor it's got. x Mosas are a hell of a lot more resilient than normal. As this is going to take a long time, I'm going to keep skipping forward a bit. Already gone through one harpoon gun. Get ready to scan it again. It's just below half torpor. It's raising up again. You could try walking it to shallow water so the trap doesn't go down. As if you're standing on ground, you wouldn't have to adjust a turtle cage's height. Alright, let's skip forward again. The night has passed. I've run out of trank harpoons, so I'm now on trank arrows. It's getting really close to being knocked out. I'll keep going. Almost there. There we go. Knocked it out. That took ages, especially by myself. Right, that's the hard part done. All we've got to do now is wait for it to get hungry. I'm going to starve tame it. Then I'm going to give it kibble. It's got half health left. Not bad. You're going to be mine. Right, I'm going to get on a bass low, check there's no predators around. We did one and a half harpoon guns and three and a half crossbows. Alright, I've given it 200 narcos. I'm on times four taming on this server. Let's give it another 50. I think it's hungry enough. I'm going to give it exceptional kibble, but you also can give it extraordinary kibble, which is one up from there. It will tame it on the same efficiency. That's it, big fella. You have a little nibble on that. Still going to take a few. This is the most satisfying part, watching a taming bar go up. Right, I've guessed how much starvation to do. Might have been a bit too much, but never mind. Look at it shoot up. That's it. He's my baby. You shall be mine. Nothing will attack you. There we go. Let's call it Flipper for now. Put a saddle on it. 
Now because I tamed it so high up, it's stuck out of the water. Sometimes it'll be able to dive down, sometimes it won't. So to get it unstuck, what you need to do is cryo it. It moves around if you try and do it from below. So mount a Mosa, stand on top of its back, then do it. It's much easier. There we go. And then throw it out once you're in water. And that's how you get yourself a super powerful Exmosa. Well, with this turtle trap, you can get any big sea creature you want. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe if you've not already, and click the bell icon to get notified of when I upload next. There's links to other videos at the end. Comment on what you would like to see. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye.